using restricted credentials in Cloud BCI. What do you do when you need to make sure that credentials that you have defined on your controller are only available to certain jobs? Now you're able to do that with the CloudBees Restricted Credentials plugin. Here's our starting point. I have an Operations Center and I have two controllers connected to this Operations Center. All three of them are running 2.332.1.5. Let's go over to our first controller, CC1, and let's go ahead and install the Restricted Credentials plugin. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to show you what it looks like to begin with. So if we take a look at Manage Credentials, what we see is the normal Jenkins with a global domain. That's all that we see. So let's go back over to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins. We'll go to Available, and then we will search for CloudBees-RES. And here you're going to see the CloudBees Restricted Credentials plugin. We'll go ahead and select that. Download now and install after restart. And now that we're back, let's go back over to Manage Jenkins and go to Manage Credentials. And what we'll see now is we now have another Jenkins store, but right now it has this key icon. And we can see that this is for the restricted credentials provider. The one above is the Jenkins credential provider. So now we've added a new credentials provider that is meant for only restricted credentials. Now let's go back to the root of our controller and take a look at what we have defined here. We have a couple of jobs. We have a test OC folder. We'll look at that in a few moments. I have a test job and I have a test folder that also has test job in it. Now these two test jobs are exactly the same. I have test job defined as a very simple pipeline. I'm just loading in a credential named foo-bar into this foo-bar environment variable, and then we're just saying echo hello world. So I'm not actually using the credential, but what I want you to see is that when the job runs, sometimes it will pass and sometimes it will fail based on how we have the credential set up. So let's go ahead and run both of these test jobs and show you what it looks like when the job runs. So if we take a look at the output from one, what we're going to see is the start, we see it's running, and then we get an error for foobar because foobar is our defined credential. We haven't defined the credential yet, but I want you to see what it looks like right now. Let's go ahead and go back up to the root of this controller and run the same test job. Just to prove it out, I'll show you that the job is defined exactly the same. That's what we want, so let's go ahead and run this job right here. When we take a look at it, we'll see that it failed with the exact same error, foobar. So we have two versions of test job defined, one at the root of the controller and one within the test folder on the controller. So we have it defined root, and then the job is also defined within test folder. So let's go ahead and go over and create that restricted credential. And the way we're gonna do that is we're first gonna click on global beside this restricted store. We'll add a credential, and what you'll notice is unlike other Jenkins credentials, we now have an allow list and a deny list. And the documentation for this feature is down in the description of this video. Below that, we're gonna see our normal available credential types. So in this case, we're just gonna create a username with password. We could create any of the others, doesn't really matter. But what matters to us right now is that we create a credential with the ID of foo-bar, and I'll go ahead and set it for the description as well. But before I click on OK, what I want to do is I only want this credential accessible to the test job that is within the test folder. I don't want it accessible by the test job that's at the root of my controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an allow list for test-folder slash star star slash star. And if you click on the help for allow list, it goes through and documents for you how this works. It's a comma-separated list of all the patterns that you want this credential to apply to. So in this case, it's just using ant globs. So if you've been used to using ant in the past, then you can go ahead and use that same convention here. So in the case of my folder slash star star slash star, 
That means any jobs within the My folder would have access to that credential. In our case, what we're using is test-folder. So with this pattern, what we're saying is this credential is going to be available for any jobs within test-folder. Now we could have also set up a deny list, but for right now, since I'm setting up to where it's exclusively for this one folder, I'm okay with this setting. So let's go ahead and click on okay. And now we can see that we have our credential set up. Let's go back over to first our test job on root. We'll go ahead and click on build now. And what we'll see from the output is that foobar is not accessible. It can't find a credential with foo bar. But if I go into test folder and run test job, what we're going to see is the output is going to give us success. It found the credential, so it was able to continue on and run the rest of the job, which in our case was just echoing out, hello world. So at this point, we've restricted the credential for any jobs that are within test-folder, that works. And we also ran our job that was at the root of the controller, that didn't work. So in our case, that's also a success. Now, so far, we've only looked at working with a restricted credential on a controller, but we can also use restricted credentials on the operation center. Now, I've gone ahead and I've already installed the same plugin on the operation center as well as on the CC2 controller. So right now, the restricted credentials plugin is installed on the operation center, on CC1, and on CC2. Now, with the restricted credentials plugin on the operation center, when I try to use that credential on a controller, the patterns that I'm going to set up only apply to the operation center. What that means, unlike what we saw in the previous example, I cannot set up a restricted credential on the operation center to apply to the test folder on CC1. However, I can set up a credential on the operation center to only apply to CC2 and any of the jobs on CC2. I cannot go down into folders within CC2, only at the root of CC2. So let's go ahead and set that up. We'll go to Manage Jenkins. Let's go to Manage Credentials. We can see here I've already installed this previously. We'll click on that. I'm going to click on a credential. My allow list for this one is just a allow list for CC2. So I'm saying controllers because I have a controllers folder on my operation center and then CC2 lives within that folder. What I can't do is do something like this. I can't say test OC slash star star slash star. That won't work. It won't cross that boundary. So all we're going to say is I'm going to set this allow list for CC2. So in the case of maybe if I had CC3 and CC4, but I don't want this credential to apply to CC1, I could potentially go off and say, hey, for my deny list, I would say CC1. All other controllers could use this credential except for CC1. But in my case, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and set up a CC2. I'm going to set up roughly the same credential. What I'm doing is I'm just saying an OC username. I'm using bar as the password. My ID is OC-bar. We'll look at the job in just a moment. And the same for my description. So now I have the OC bar defined on the operation center. Let's go take a look at the OC job that's on both of the controllers. So I have a test-OC folder within test OC, I have an OC job. And if we take a look at OC job, what I have is roughly the same as the previous job that we had defined, but right now I'm pulling in OC-bar. So this is on CC1. Let's go over and take a look at CC2. And we can see that we have, again, a test OC and an OC job here. If we take a look at the configure, again, same configuration, OC-bar. So let's go back over to CC1. And let's go ahead and run the job for OC job. We'll click on build now. And we can see that this fails because there is no OC bar defined. However, if we go back over to CC2, Go into test OC, OC job. Let's click on build now. Here we can see that it's able to find that credential because we've 
set up the allow list to allow for that credential. And the job completes with hello world. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.